So the 50 kilogram flower pot is suspended from wires AB and BC, which have diameters of 1.5 and 2 millimeters, respectively. If the wires have a normal failure stress of 350 megapascals, determine the factor of safety of each wire. So in order to use our factor of safety equation for stress, which I'll write over here, okay, we need to know both the failure stress, which we've been given as 350 megapascals, and the stress that's actually within our wire. So I've called that um, the allowable stress, or alternatively, you can think about it as the design stress. So this is going to be our goal. And in order to find this stress, we need to have the force in each of our members. Okay. So the first part of this uh, question is going to be drawing the free body diagram and finding the force in each one. Once we know that, we should be able to convert it into the actual stress within the wire and then finally convert it into the safety factor. So let's start by drawing the free body diagram. Um, of, I'm going to do it of the ring that sits in the center here. All right, so forces that are going to be acting on it. We're going to have a force acting upwards um, through this wire because, of course, I should have mentioned both of these are two force members. Okay, so that means that the force within the wire is in the same direction as the member itself. So this is FBC, and the angle in here is going to be the same as the angle in here. Um, applying the Z rule, that becomes 45 degrees. Okay. Similarly, we can go and apply a force through this member, which is also two force, which is FAB. And again, if we apply the Z rule, I'll put it down on the bottom here, the angle. It's going to be 30 degrees. And the final thing that we need to apply is we're going to have a force acting down um, due to the flower. And that's going to be MG. We can work out um, what this actually is as a number, though, because we know the mass M is 50 kilograms. So it's 50 multiplied by 9.8. And this is, in fact, 490 newtons. So now we just need to figure out these two forces, FAB and FAC, sorry, BC. And we have our equilibrium equations in order to do that. So I'm going to start with summing forces in the x direction to be equal to 0. So we're going to have negative FAB. It's going to be the cos side of the triangle to get the x component. And we're going to have positive FBC. Again, it's going to be the cos component in order to get the x direction. This is completely in y, so it doesn't end up in the equation. Um, so we know it's directly equal to 0. And unfortunately, this question is going to end up being simultaneous equations. So I'm going to rearrange for one of these variables to be able to substitute in at the next step. So if I go for FBC, for instance, it's going to be equal to FAB cos 30, this swings to the other side, and then we need to divide by cos 45. So I'm going to call this equation 1. So we now need to go ahead and get our second equation from looking in the y direction. So starting with FAB, it's going upwards, so it's going to be positive, and it's the sine side of the triangle that we need to take. The y component of FBC is also going up, so it's positive, and we take the sine side of the triangle. And we've got this force here, the weight of the flower acting down. So it goes in as negative. So this becomes equation 2. And we have the same two unknowns across equation 1 and 2. So it just becomes a case of solving them simultaneously, which I've decided to do with substitution. So if we sub equation 1 into 2, we should be able to solve it. Okay, so FBC has been replaced with this one here. We still have sine 45 on the end. Okay. So we end up with just one unknown in the equation, which is FAB. And it just becomes a case of simplifying now. So if we put everything together that has FAB in it, we end up with 1.366 times the variable. 
And if I move this to the other side, it becomes positive 490. So FAB on its own is about 358.7 newtons. So we now need to figure out what FBC is, and we have equation one to do that most easily. It's already rearranged for FBC. So if we substitute in, we now know FAB. So FBC comes out to be about 439.3 newtons. All right, so now that we know both of those forces, we need to convert them into the actual stress within these members. So I'll scroll down again. And let's start by looking at member AB. So the stress we see in this member is going to be equal to the force within it divided by its cross-sectional area. So this is going to be equal to the 358 0.7 newtons divided by the area. Now, if we go back to the question, we were told some information about this. We were told that AB has a diameter of 1.5 and BC has a diameter of 2. So we can use this to work out our cross-sectional area. It's going to be pi on 4 multiplied by the diameter squared. So 1.5 squared goes in here. So this becomes 203 megapascals. We can then repeat this except for our other member, which was BC. So still stress is equal to the force divided by the cross-sectional area, but this time the force is going to be slightly different. We decided that FBC had 439 going through it, and the cross-sectional area, it had a 2 millimeter diameter, so we can put it into that equation. And this comes out with a stress of 140 megapascals, approximately. So the final step is to convert this into a safety factor. And we're given a little bit of information around this. So this is our equation for the safety factor. Um, and we're told that our normal failure stress is 350 megapascals. So we can just apply this equation. So this is it. So our failure stress, we just said was um, 350. And the allowable or the design for this member is going to be this 203. Okay. It's the actual number that's going through your, your member. So working this out, you end up with a safety factor of 1.72. Okay, so this is good. Anytime you have a safety factor greater than one, you've got something that isn't going to break. So we can go through and apply exactly the same equation to our other member. Okay, so we're still considering the same failure stress of 350 megapascals, it's made of the same material. The allowable this time is basically what we just calculated. Okay, this 140 megapascals that we're actually experiencing when we put the flower on it. So this one comes out to have a safety factor of about 2.5. Okay, again, it's greater than one, so that means that it's not going to break. If you end up with safety factors of less than one, then you've, um, you've broken your structure. So that's all there is for that question, and see you in another video.